Hi, I'm Lorene Coffey, and today we're going to be reflecting on the goodness of God. But before we do, let's prepare our hearts and minds by reading from God's Word. A few weeks ago, I had an extended family member reach out to me asking if Brian and I could hop on a Zoom call with her and her husband to talk about some faith questions. This family member is a longtime follower of Christ, but was taking a look around her at the world, the rise of COVID during the holiday season, deaths rising, losses, and the key question she was focusing on at that time was this, how can a good God allow terrible things to happen? And that was even before Russia's invasion into the Ukraine. Now, I'm guessing most of us have heard that question raised in some form. And, you know, if I'm honest, I've wrestled with it at times myself. Maybe you have, too. So what does it mean to be good? The word good is used so often in our everyday lives that it almost loses its meaning. For example, how many times a day do we say, good morning, and good luck, and good job? But the Bible tells us that the word good actually means holy, pure, and righteous. A.W. Tozer, author of this book, The Knowledge of the Holy, uses synonyms to define goodness and says this, the goodness of God is that which disposes him to be kind, cordial, benevolent, and full of goodwill toward men. He is tender-hearted and of quick sympathy. He goes on to say, the goodness of God is the drive behind all the blessings he daily bestows upon us. God created us because he felt good in his heart and he redeemed us for the same reason. So given the definition of goodness and what good produces, what's our view of goodness, yours and mine? You see, the problem tends to be our human and skewed view of God's goodness. In our very self-centered view of life, we equate God's goodness with doing good things. But when we don't experience life as we think it should be, when things don't go our way, or when circumstances are beyond our control, we question the goodness of God, don't we? Secondly, our view of the goodness of God comes from our very limited human perspective. We tend to think life on earth is all there is. Well, we believe there is heaven and eternity, but our view of God's goodness is often impacted by our very narrow view of what we can know and what we see. Now, we've looked at what goodness means and we've, as humans, how we view it, but what about God's view of goodness? Again, Tozer reminds us that divine goodness as one of God's attributes is self-caused, perfect, and eternal. Since God is immutable, he says, he never varies in the intensity of his loving kindness. Out of God's goodness, we learn our purposes that we don't have the ability to understand or to see from where we are right now. But through our faith, we trust that his character is good and that he cannot depart from that. So when we experience difficult life circumstances, disappointments, even devastation. As followers of Christ, we hold on to a God whose goodness surpasses all life events and tragedies because he is perfect and eternal. So what's our response to the goodness of God? In 2019, a worship song was released that does a beautiful job of descri describing an appropriate response. It's called The Goodness of God. Perhaps you're familiar with it. This is how it reads. All my life you've been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God chorus again. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. 
Because your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Your goodness is running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything because your goodness is running after me. Three responses I would challenge you with as I close today. First, sing of the goodness of God. Now you may not sing, um, but the writer tells us with every breath, he's gonna share with others about the goodness of God. So tell someone, have you experienced God's goodness in your life? Share your story. Secondly, praise God that you can live daily in the goodness of God. It's not dependent on any of the circumstances going on around you. And finally, surrender now to our good God. He wants us to grow in the fruit of goodness so we can live a fulfilling life, a loving Him and those around us. The song ends with this. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. May this be our prayer today and every day. Amen.